Uh, there you are. Good evening. I'm Dr. Ken Smith uh, from Marketplace in Action. It's a joy to be on the air with you tonight. And with me, as always, is Dr. Patty Rose. I'd like to start out with, for you have magnified your word above your name. That's in Psalms 138.2. What does that mean? That means that every word in that Bible is even beyond the word of the, the Lord's name himself. So that would be my thought tonight. Remember, marketplace in action is exactly what it means, the marketplace in action. We are here to give thoughts of principles of what the word would say and how can you use it for a better life. So I'd like to start off tonight with, if I may, is if we confess Jesus publicly, and allow me to, if you have a pen, maybe a piece of paper, there might be a note or two you might want to scratch down on in case I say something good or something you might want to remember. Um, we do this uh, from the bottom of my heart. This is something that we really feel led to inspire and to teach uh, godly principles and how it can affect your life and what will make you better through the Word of God of how to have a better life, a better job, a better relationship, a, a better overall view of what we have here on earth. So I'd like to start out with if we practice our faith of course, with study of the word, memorize the scriptures, speaking in our own voice, that builds faith for us as the body of Christ. I think in Mark 4, 32, it says, the word is like a mustard seed. So what is a mustard seed? It's a very, very small seed, but when planted, it grows up to be a real big tree with deep roots, and that's exactly what I mean by that. So if we could change our heart by planting a seed of God's word in it, using his scriptures and our thinking about what the word says, and of course we change our view of others, couldn't we change the world? Tonight I'd like to bring in Dr. Patty. Patty, what do you think the most important thing is that we're struggling with today is the modern world in 2014. One of the most important things is, is our relationship mm. with Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And it's not just receiving him, but it's getting to know him and spending time with him and really getting to know his ways by his word and having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is very, very important. That's excellent. And by the way, I like what you're wearing tonight. Mark 4, 23 says, if anyone has ears to hear, should we listen and understand? Verse 24, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you'll receive and will be given. Verse 25 says, but if you're not listening, even what little understanding you have, it will be taken away. So it's very important that we do understand what the scriptures are. And for an example, seven verses down in verse 30, like we talked about before, a mustard seed would be like the faith that Jesus is trying to talk about, or not trying, he is talking about. So we have that kind of faith. I mean, a small mustard seed, just think about how it grows into our heart. And problems start disappearing, either through our maturity, through God's word, or just flat out, uh, being in, uh, patient, and I want to talk about that a little later on about patience, how it develops our maturity. But let me get right to it. John thirteen fifteen says, though he might slay me, yet I will trust him, even so I might defend my own ways before him. What was Job saying? Job says in that verse, defend means I'm going to stick with the word no matter what. If God comes, I'll defend myself because I'll stand on his word. Shouldn't that be what we do? One other thing I want to bring up, and this is very important. I want to bring Dr. Patty in on this one. I'm still standing because in Psalms 92, 12, and if you allow me to get out there a little bit, I just want to lay a little foundation here, and I'll, I'll uh, get to where I want to get to. And I want to talk about patience tonight. But, and what if God is not speaking? I want to bring those two subjects. So don't you forget to tell me. But anyway, uh, like a palm tree, in fact, the wind blows the tree. You know how our palm trees here in Southern California blow wind after wind. But notice how they bounce back quicker. You know why? Because they're so deeply rooted. 
I believe that's what God's saying to us today. We're like palm trees. No matter how much offense, no matter how the world comes after us, no matter how much we're going through, we're like a palm tree. We'll keep bouncing back. Dr. Patty, we were talking about that earlier. What's your view on the palm tree? It's being solid, being solid in the word uh, and knowing how to receive the revelation on the word and what God's telling you for the moment. Because the world is in a lot of crisis right now. And if we're not grounded in, in the word with understanding and with, mixed with faith, then you're going to be able to hear the word in a timely season for what you need. Amen. That's right on. I want to say this. Have we not all been offended by people or even God himself for things we do not understand? Let me give you an example. Remember John the Baptist? It talks about when he was in prison. I mean, John knew Jesus for how long? Wasn't he, weren't they cousins? Didn't their parents know each other? I mean, think about this for a second. Here John is. He was proclaiming that he was the Messiah, and Jesus simply said, he responded back, tell John, again, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, and the dead will be raised. Go back and tell John. Now, Think about it for a minute. What was John the Baptist thinking? I did all this for you. What happened? But watch this. Matthew eleven six says, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Dr. Patty, would you add to that? Well, offenses must come. And we've all been offended from one way or another. Amen. But Jesus said, be not easily offended. In other words, go a little bit farther. Maybe they're coming from a, another place. Maybe they've been hurt. They've been wounded right or whatever. So if you take it back to, to God and say, like returning good for evil, you know, I mean, that says it in the word. You don't hear it preached too much. But when, when do we do that? When do we do that? A soft answer turneth away wrath. So we need to go back and find out, Lord, is, is this for me, or are they uh, speaking from their own spirit? And when you know that they've been hurt or wounded, just like we all have, then maybe we can have a little more compassion and wait and let them see it themselves. Amen. And I want to add, Mark 12, 28 says, and this is very important why I give the scriptures, this is not my idea, but what the Lord is saying to us tonight is, one of the scribes came and asked, Jesus, of course, which is the first commandment of all? Now, I want you to think about it. Here's the scribe. Now, can you imagine what the religious time of day they had, the laws that they had back then? I mean, have you ever seen our tax code today? There's four million words. Can you imagine? It's probably just as complicated as it is now as it was back then. But Jesus simply said this. Now, watch this. This is very important. You should love your God with all your heart, might, and soul. And the second command is love your neighbor as you do yourself. There is no higher commandments than that. That's Mark 30, 31. Now, think about that for a second. Why would he say that? If, that's, if we had all this law and all this religion back then, don't we now? Let me say this. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 6, 8. I think that's what he's saying to us tonight. We have found favor. Also, it says, this is his promise. His ears are open to our cry. That's Psalms 34, 15. Write that down. So when you're in pain, when you need him, he's hearing what you're saying. Decisions determine destiny. Prayerlessness often is a form of hiding. Many people miss out on God because of impatience and anything else. Here's another thought. When God is silent, does that mean it's no? I'll come back to that. God will take weakness and trade it in for his strength. Another thought. Remember, there's not always, we're not the owner of anything. We're just mere stewards here. That all of the possessions that we have is steward what he already owns. Watch this. Life's greatest poverty is not riches, but it's spiritual life. Also, the greatest wealth is not money, but it's relationship. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's easier to maintain relationships and friendships, to get them than maintain them, or a business or a marriage. It's easy, or not always easy, but it's easy to marry somebody, but to maintain it is a lot difficult. Wouldn't you agree? Another thought. Crisis is not failure. It's only a process. 
Dr. Fay, would you like to add to that? What do you see that maintains, is it a process of crisis? Do you see that as trouble or help to us? Um, it's a two-way street. It can uh, bring you to the end of yourself where you can't. Oh, amen. But he can. And sometimes we get so busy that we do end up in crisis because we become insensitive to spending that time with him and asking him to make the time. Sometimes we have to make the time to be with him because, we, because of insensitivity of we can't reach That's him it. on the spare of the moment when there is a crisis because we haven't had that time with him because we're too busy. Amen. And I want to bring to the, uh, and you folks already know this, I'm just refreshing your memory. Remember 1 Corinthians 15, 46 is, it's first the natural, then the spirit or supernatural. We have to be kings to first, that's in uh, Revelation, and then priests. What do I mean? Kings is the natural, business, education, wealth. Mm -hmm. Second, we have to be a priest. If we don't know what's going on in the natural, how can we move in the supernatural? Of course, the priest would be more church, faith, and salvation. But here's the thought. Walking worthy of our calling, with which we're called, bearing with each other in love. Isn't that what it boils down to? That's in Ephesians 4, 1 and 2. Isn't that how God sees us, is with each other in love? It's a ritual, it's ritual customs. It's, uh, we've left a big vacuum in the world. It can only be filled by understanding the kingdom of God. Let me submit this to you. Mankind searches uh, for, all, for, for us to manipulate government instead of using God's wisdom. Also, religion is the greatest obstacle until he finds the kingdom. Now, think about this. Ordained ministers, and I'm not knocking them or pastors or priests. I'm all for them. But that's a formal instruction of Christian religion. But is it not just a, what about the message and concepts of the kingdom? or the principles of the kingdom of God. Where is that school? It's called life. And what it is, is there's a distraction. There's no distinction, I'm sorry, between government and spirituality. We also are political and religious both. I don't mean religious, I mean God-centered. We are also secede where there's a, the only way we can really secede in that is a clear moral code. And of course, Man was created to govern and rule. Wouldn't you agree, Dr. Patty? Yes, that was the first call. And there's two kinds of influences. So be aware. The first one is, the fast one obviously, is it'll multiply quickly. The quick fix, the quick influence, the uh, to, disappears as quickly as it comes. To influence people, to judge others. But let me submit this. Lasting influence takes longer, but it's more slowly, more successful, more persistent. I would submit to you that it starts from the inside out, and the influence of God's kingdom is irresistible. It's subtle, but unassuming. So it, the growth is unmistakable, but it takes the growth for a real ministry to show fruit. I want to submit this. You've heard the parable of Mark 4, 16, where it says the seed of the rocky soil represents those who have hear the message. Now watch this. And I, I was staggered when I saw the numbers. A hundred percent, where it talks about the 30 to 60 to 100, hundred percent, only a percent of the people really hear the word and are attained to it or act on it. We were shocked when we studied this out. The 60 percent in that parable is only 25 percent people really hear the word. And the 30 percent was only 40 percent. So in other words, when they hear it, Either the enemy steals it, it's, it doesn't go into our heart, we get distracted, things come up. We don't really have that sown in our heart and really listen to it and study it out. When we hear these scriptures or these promises or these teachings, we have to go home and look at it and really study it out so it grounds into our heart so we really know where it's going. Now, the seed along with uh, sometimes uh, the thorns by hearing God's word Sometimes it's, it, it chokes it by other people speaking into you or saying, oh, that Christian stuff, or I wouldn't do that, or whatever the case may be. Be very careful who you surround yourself with and who's speaking into you. Because unconditional love, now think about that. The only one that really can convict you is the Holy Spirit. 
I mean, we don't judge, but we are to love. John 13, 35 says, for you love one another, will prove to the world you are my disciples. John 7, 24 says, look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly and honestly. In your thoughts, Dr. Patty, I know the pure can only be see the purest of other people, but as far as judging, how do you feel about judgment? Well, I believe that there's a thin line between judging and discerning. I believe uh, the believers usually believe that they're discerning, but when you get discernment, that shows you how to pray for that person, basically, not to be judging them. And we have to be really careful about the judging and thinking it's discerning. I don't want to switch gears here, but let me, real quick, I'm short on time for the time for you folks. I want to get this out. I want to talk real quickly about if, we, if God is silent. Real, just real quickly, just five minutes. Acts 1, 7, make note of that, says, when it's not our time to know the time or season which the Father has put in his authority. Now watch this. The verse next said, you should see, receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So right when he gives you the authority or that set time, now the power comes. That's when you act. But what do you do in the meantime? Ask in my name, I'll do it the way the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask for anything, I will do it. But watch this. Sometimes God's answers are complicated. I mean, they're not complicated. I want to stress that. If it's complicated, it's not God. They're very, very simple. Now, he doesn't promise he'll answer right away, but he promises in the word, I will answer you. But here's the thought. Psalms 27, 14 says, Wait for the Lord, a good courage, shall strengthen your heart, and wait and say on the Lord. What does that mean? God's desire for maturity before he answers. What I mean by that is, notice, waiting is the strength. Little by little, we mature a little bit more for the things of God. It will be patient and wait. Each day, if I don't get the answer today, I'm more mature than yesterday, and so on and so forth. Now, by, by then, we'll be able to handle the answer, and God is more interested in our maturity than providing the answer immediately. So, Psalms 37, 34 says, wait on the Lord, and keep his in other, way, in other words, standing on his word. So we have to go back to what we heard before. That doesn't mean it's a passive thing. We just sit there and do nothing. No, we stand on the word and know what we do. We keep in the word. We keep believing. We keep prophesying our destiny. We keep standing there until he comes through. So we should exalt you to the land where the wicked are cut off, and you shall see it. In other words, if we'll stand with the Lord and people are offending us and taking advantage of us, the God has promised them, one of his promises is we'll see the wicked being cut off. They'll be dealt with. They'll be judged in his timing. Also, by the way, when we're in God's word, it brings prosperity. We we'll wait because we're more mature in God. Another thought would be waiting brings prosperity in every area of our lives, whether it be health, relationship, finances. It's not always money. It's all that and more. Watch this. We're waiting to show God promised us that we'll ask, let, outlast the evil one. In other words, there'll be a day where we actually witness destruction. That's what the word says. So if, how do we know this? Proverbs 20, 22, it says, I do not, I will repay evil, wait for the Lord, he'll deliver you. So it's very important. We don't get offended. We don't get offended with the Lord himself, and we don't be, uh, be offended with the people that we're talking to. We know their day is coming. But that's not the point. That ties us up too much. The point is the word. How to stand on the word. How do we get through it? We speak the word. It grows on our heart. The problems start disappearing. That's how we go as Christians. Luke 18, 15 says, for that is the good soil that those who are hearing the word. Dr. Patty, in two minutes or less, what would you say the good soil is? The soil that's going to bear much fruit. Amen. And the main thing is when you've done all you can do, stand. And if you don't know anything else to do, the best thing to do after you've done all you can do is to praise him. Praise him because that brings, that brings it even quicker because as you praise him, he can bring the angels, he can bring any way and move on people's hearts to bring to pass your desires. And remember, impatience is costly vice. Impatience is a facet of unbelief. 
unbelief is the basis of sin. More people miss the answer of prayer from that. Fulfillment of dreams than anything else. As a matter of fact, they don't even pray through this, and they believe they're not believing long enough for God to come through. Let me help you with this. If you don't remember anything I've said, stand on this. Hebrew 10.35. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. What does that mean? Be confident in the Lord. Remember that time he helped you through that financial bind? Remember that relationship you didn't think was going to last? It did. Remember that person you didn't think you were going to marry and you did? Remember that time you thought you were going to lose a job and God came through and got you a better job and opened a different door? Those are the things you should be remembering, not what's happened in the past. But let me say this. I'll close with this. Romans 10, 6 and 8. The words in us, even in our mouth, in our heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. In other words, teach. Giving God's word with your own voice, God has given us. Once it comes from our mouth back to our heart, the promises are yes and amen. So it's very important that we do not deny even, for an example, sickness. We, all de we don't deny that we're sick. That's not where the power comes. It exists. We deny where, uh, where our body is lined up. We, uh, there is sickness. We don't admit that. But the key is don't dwell on that. Lie, ask the Holy Spirit or the man, the spirit man inside you to line your body up with the Word of God. That's how you get healed. And I just want to say this. Redeem the curse of the law and deliver us from the authority of darkness. That's Galatians 3.13. Dr. P., would you close for us? I would like to just uh, pray for you and even bless you. I'd like to bless you with the Heavenly Father's blessing and all that you have need of. And I pray that you have a heart that can receive all that he has for you because he loves you very, very much. Hallelujah. And I'll close with this. As you're praying and asking the people as you're praying around a meal, use this scripture, Exodus 23, 25. I'll bless you, food and water. I'll protect you from illness. But here's the good one, 26, the second verse down. I will give you a long and fulfilled life. God bless you. We'll see you next month our marketplace in action. Have a good night.